about auto layout and it's something people have a lot of feelings about. Lauren, how do you feel about it? So many feelings. I personally love it. I absolutely love auto layout, but I will say I also absolutely understand why some folks do not love auto layout or get really frustrated with auto layout. I totally understand that. There is a lot to get with auto layout. There's, it's, it's not really a quick thing to, to get under your belt. You really have to kind of dive into it. And I think there's a time and a place for it too. I love it when I'm towards the end of designs and I want to make sure that my designs have really specific padding and really yeah. specific spacing and really move with one another and resize and everything. But when I'm first starting out with my designs and I'm just iterating or if I want to iterate on somebody else's designs and I'm popped into a file that has auto layout, that can be really frustrating. I just want to detach everything. So I totally get the love and hate relationship with auto layout. Absolutely. And there are so many moving parts. We'd love to dig into some of those now. Starting with parent child. This is something that we hear a lot in reference to auto layout. What does it mean? <laughs> yeah, great question. <laughs> so I like to think of the parent and the child as the parent is the container, mm -hmm. the child is the contents. And a lot of times you'll hear with like hug and fill, one of those is dependent on the child, one is dependent on the container. So the contents is gonna be the child and the container is gonna be the parent. And you can have a parent that is also a child, a child that is also a parent. That's where it gets really tricky because then things start to override each other with the resizing. So that definitely can get confusing. Okay. Okay, and you already hinted at hug and fill. When should you use hug versus fill? How should we use those in auto layout? Great question. So with hug, that is the parent is hugging the child. First of all, that's adorable. Yeah. Uh, the parent is hugging the child. The container is hugging the contents. Mm. So the contents is going to determine the size. If, okay. I, if the child grows, the parent is going to hug that yeah. no matter how big the child gets. So the child is determining the contents. Right. And that's with hug. With fill, the child is filling up the parent container, okay. but the parent container, this container right here is never gonna change size unless right. you specifically set the size of that, okay. which is where fixed can come in too. Of course. So <laughs> with fill, you are filling up the parent container. The child is filling the container and the parent is determining that size of the container. Great, so I understand hug versus fill. When might we use, give me an example of a common use of hug versus fill. Yeah, absolutely. So a button can actually be a really good example mm. for both. Um, if Ooh. you have a button that is, say on a mobile screen, if you want yeah. the button to be the entire size of the mobile oh, screen, yeah. you can set the button to fill the parent container, which is yeah. the frame it's within. Okay. So it's in the screen. So that way, all your buttons will be the exact same size. They'll be the size, the width of that screen minus a couple pixels. Yeah. So more so maybe on like a desktop screen, yeah. you don't necessarily want all the buttons to be that exact same width. No. You want them to kind of change with the size of the text. Maybe yeah. you have some longer text, but maybe you have some shorter text that just says something like let's go versus yeah. add this to cart can be a little bit longer. If yeah. you want the button to always be the size of the text, plus or minus the padding on the side, that's a really great example for when to use hug because that button will now be hugging the contents, which is the text yeah. of the container. Fantastic. Let's now talk about auto gap versus fixed gaps. When should I use those? Good question. So many good questions when it comes to auto layout. <laughs> <laughs> so auto versus fixed. Fixed is if you want a very specific set number between each thing. So okay. let's use eight pixels, for example. If I classic always, if pixels. I have my yeah, classic eight pixels, <laughs> if I have my content in a container and I have, say, like multiple groupings of text, I always want those different paragraphs, say, to be eight pixels apart. I'm yeah. going to set that to be a fixed gap. Yeah. That's the fixed number. Okay. Auto, on the other hand, is if I don't really care what that number is, but I always want it to be the same number. Okay. Like say there's, we have three different items. Let's talk about a nav bar at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Say we have four different icons in that nav bar. Right. I don't care how far apart they are. Yeah. I just know that I always want them to be an even distance apart. So that we would set to auto so yeah. that as that nav bar shrinks and grows with the size of the screen. Yeah they're always gonna be the same distance. If we had set right. that to eight, we might get stuck with all of our buttons, all of our icons on one side because they would always be eight pixels apart. Yeah. So 
depending yep. on kind of like what you're using, hug, fill, et cetera, yeah. might change how you want to do your gaps if you want it to be auto or if you want it to be a set number. Makes sense. Feels important for things like responsive design and thinking about. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And auto layout in general is going to be huge when talking about responsive design. Okay. So we've learned a lot about auto layout, but I still might run into issues when I'm riffing on a design or trying to set this up myself and it just doesn't work quite right. Can we talk through some of the common issues I run into? 100%. Okay, let's look at this example. I've set this up in this card, but when I try to shrink it, it the text disappears. Oh, I see. I try to shrink it, the text disappears. What am I doing wrong here? Yes, so first thing is we're noticing this because we're resizing it. So when we're working with responsive designs, that's going to be the biggest time that auto layout comes into play. Tell me what exactly are you trying to get to happen to this text? Where do you want this text to go? Yeah, so I have the card there and I want the text to fill the card, essentially. And that's exactly what you're looking for. Okay. We need to check. So uh, kind of speaking this out loud, I find it to be really helpful sometimes. I'm just saying like, what am I trying to do? <laughs> I want to fill. So we're going to look to see if things are set to fill. So we have mm. one layer in here. We have our title, our paragraph and our button. Yeah, that's set to fill with. OK, great. Right. But let's dig in a little bit deeper, holding down command and going into this text. Okay. We notice this one is set to a set uh -huh. with because of that. That's kind of the main thing that's telling Figma, nope, I always want this to be a set with, so never shrink this down. So <laughs> let's set this to fill container. Okay. And now when we resize, it should ah. move everything along as we expect. Everything is now filling the container as we expect it to. Perfect. So is it fair to say I should just always fill? No, <laughs> that Checks. is not fair. I understand the assumption for sure, but there's many different things that could be going on. Okay. So this is an example of we do have everything set to fill. Okay. We have our main grouping here. Then we have when we go a layer deeper, that's also set to fill. But when we resize, things are not working. What the heck yeah. is going on? The text is overlapping with the button here. And this is a little bit of a tricky one. That's because even though we have this set to fill, yeah, it's actually set for the height here, a fixed size. And what okay. we need to do is set that to an auto height or mm. that you see that changes that to hug because we want this to be hugging the text here. Yeah. Now, when we resize this, ah. the text moves with all of the card here. The text is, is shrinking and growing with the size of the card. So Three. that one we saw, we changed that to hug and we changed the text resizing there. So it's not always fill. Sometimes it's fill, but sometimes it's hug. There's who knows when it could be, but there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of trial and error that you kind of have to do to go through and figuring out, okay, which one is it? I think I'll just call you. <laughs> Give me a call. It's okay. But honestly, sometimes same thing with me. I often and and going through the routine of, okay, is it this? Is it this? And a lot of times what I like to do is create a component and then duplicate so I can play ah, on this instance here okay. and not ruin my main one. And then I can just get rid of the component. Um, but it's really helpful to kind of continue to play around and see how the resizing grows and shrinks because like we said at the beginning, yeah. it may look perfect just yeah. looking at it at one size, but once you start to shrink and grow, that is where things can get you into a little bit of a pickle. I love that. I love the idea of copying, so I'm not worried about, you know, upsetting the original. That's fantastic. Thanks so much for troubleshooting this with me, Lauren. You bet.